Hi there, folks, and welcome to another exciting episode of Michael's Backyard Marina. Boy, have I think I got a good one here for you. Now, I've had the banana. If you guys have followed me, I've had the banana boat for probably about two years now. So what I call the banana, um, it has its yellow fiberglass 14-foot tri-hull that I totally restored. Uh, <clears throat> check out my channel. I've got a whole five-part series of restoring the interior. Now, this is one I restored that the guts were on the inside of the boat were completely rotted out to the point where I actually literally vacuumed all the wood that was in the boat out of the boat that was underneath the floor and had to scrape all the water-soaked and saturated foam that was underneath the floor and completely re put new stringers in it, glass it in, re-gelled it, put way too much money into a 14-foot boat. But that was with the intention, I'm never going to sell it. So that's what I did. And uh, when I picked it up, a little bit of a story here. I know I'm a storyteller. Maybe not. Maybe so. Thanks for listening. Thanks for liking and subscribing. I was on vacation for a couple of weeks. And the first basically full work day, day that I was on vacation again, and I'm a long ways away from here, I find on Facebook Marketplace something I've been looking for for at least at least two years. So when I bought the old banana boat, I asked the guy. It didn't have a it didn't have a uh, motor on it, right? It didn't have a, an outboard on it. And I said, "What kind of outboard was on it? Because it had a little you know a little tiny console and all that stuff." I said, well, and the guy told me a fifty horse. I said, a fifty horse. On this boat? He goes, yeah, that's what it had on it. I'm like, wow, that seems like a lot of motor and a lot of horsepower for that size boat. But since then, I have learned. You know, originally when I was restoring that boat, I had a, you know, the Johnson 99 with a big secret. It was a 15 horse, okay, uh, that I was going to put on the back of it. I thought, that's got to be plenty. That's got to be plenty. Nope. It pushed it, but it didn't push it well. And with two people, it didn't go very fast. Maybe 10 miles an hour, maybe. The boat's got a little little heft to it, right? But it handles so well. So I stumbled onto, and it's a long shaft, so I stumbled onto a 35 horse long shaft, uh, Evinrude. And you guys have seen some videos on that, you know, in recent months during the fall. And I, and that outboard works very well. With me alone, pushes me about 27 miles an hour. With my myself and my son in it, and myself and, my son and myself are about the same size weight-wise. Yeah. His weight looks better on him than it does on me because he's about, you know, let's just say it, four to five inches taller than I am. And, uh, but uh, with two of us in it, it'd do about 20, I'm trying to remember if it's 20 or 21 miles an hour. It's been a while since both of us have been in that boat. So I was just kind of testing the theory is like how big a motor can it handle and how much weight could it handle? So while I was at, we were out in the lake one day and I said, hey, come stand back here by me. I'm sitting at the back of the boat, right? He stands next to me at the back of the boat. So we're both at 275, 285, right? On the back of the boat. And the boat handles it. Handles it like a champ. So I thought, man, there shouldn't be any problem hanging a bigger motor on the back of this, you know, bigger outboard on the back of this boat. So, I, you know, so because I always had in my mind, I'm trying to find a 50 horse. Find a, but I want tiller steer. Now, you guys might have saw that, might have seen this tiller appear out of nowhere. It's like floating in space right now because you can't see this stuff right here. You can't see it. It's invisible. Well, so what I ended up doing, kept looking, kept looking. I finally, when I was on vacation, found uh, a 50 horse with a tiller. And what you see here is a 1983. It was advertised as a 1979. But I looked up the tag and the serial number, and this is actually a 1983 twin 50 horse. This thing, these things are heavy. And what was interesting is when I got back from vacation and was arranging to pick, you know, go pick this one up the following weekend, I stumbled onto this. Another 50 horse, but it doesn't have tiller steer. But it's a 1973. So these are 10 years apart. And I thought this one up and down in the base here looked a little beefier just a little bit the gearbox you know the round bullet part of the gearbox looked a little just a little bit bigger in diameter it may be exactly the same but there's just little nuances that are a little different from the older to the new one now this would be more vintage being a 73 and my glass bar is a 72 to put 
this one on the boat. But I don't know what condition it is in. Now, this one, when I bought it, I paid $250. So it doesn't owe me a whole lot. The guy said it ran. That's all he said. It ran. Won't idle, but ran. I'm like, okay, that's fixable, right? Typically. And the pictures he had, had it hanging on the back of a boat. When I went to pick it up, there was no boat around that this would have been on. It was just on a, on a engine stand that had a board on it that it was hanging on. So I'm like, yeah, I'll take it. So I picked that one up. But this one, the guy, the story behind this one is, when I went to pick it up, he says, uh, yeah, what's wrong with it? This one has a primer. Boop. So this electric start, it also has a primer that you can hit. And he says, you can be running down the river, just hauling butt, and it just starts to fall off. And then you hit the primer and it riches it back up and it goes again. And he says, I don't want to sit here and hold the primer and the throttle and try to drive this thing. So he went in, he went in a different direction anyway. Uh, what I saw there when I got there, he has a mud motor. And because he does a lot of duck hunting, he's in shallows. He's got a mud motor. He said, I'll push that boat through five inches of water. And it's a nice big uh, Aluma Weld boat. So, so that's how I ended up with this. And I paid $500 for this because he said it ran. But I got it home, and we're gonna we're gonna do a, a walk around on this. We're gonna do a, a you know what I normally do. We're gonna set this one. Let's just let's just let's just set this one aside for a little bit, okay? We'll get back to that one in another video. But I thought it was kind of neat to be, you know, standing between two fifty horses. You know, just kind of fun. So what you see I've got going on here is now this is a, the the old wooden stands that I built uh, back. Last summer, early last summer, to put all these engines on, these outboards on, uh, handles a 50 horse actually and handles it quite well. Now, these are heavy. I don't know how heavy, but we're going to learn because I have my old deer weighing scale here. You've seen this in other videos when I want to know what the weight to something is. Now, this one I've got C clamped, scissor clamped to the board because this one doesn't have the, the regular clamps down here that you wind on to hold it onto the transom. The 35 horse does, this one does not. This one has just a hooky kind of front here, and then it's designed to be bolted on, and that's what we'll do with it. Uh, so I've got, a, I got these kind of clamped on here so when I'm wrestling around and doing things, it won't fall off. So what's your, what's your weight guess on this thing, folks? Before I weigh it, just give me a guess. Because it's, uh, it's gotta weigh a little bit. I went to pick it up and you know, the old, this area here, I think it'll catch on fire if I try to do it again. That's all I'm saying. So let's go ahead and let's, let's, let's pick it up and see what it, what it weighs. I'm curious. I don't know. I have this all set up. Now guys, this is me and this is just what, if you know me a little bit, you might know me a lot. I don't know. But this is just the way I put it. I haven't picked this up. Believe you me, I wanted to so bad. I just had to, I just wanted to know. I had to know, but I haven't. We're going to do it together. And that's what I like. I've had this cover off once and that was when I picked it up. And I kind of looked at it. I'm like, yep, looks complete and put the cover back on. I haven't pulled the cover off since. So that's what I like about doing these things, these, these videos is bringing you along. We learn together. We explore things together. And uh, it just, it makes it more entertaining for me. Uh, maybe it makes it more entertaining for you. I don't know. So let's get to picking this thing up. Whoop, whoop. Let's get it, get it under here. Ugh. Goodness. We'll take a little, so it's setting at zero right now. I'm gonna go ahead and there we go. We'll go ahead and all right, right there. She's a swinging. She's she's free. She's free. I'm gonna take a glance for you guys. Not as bad as I thought it would be, but your old boy here had it's an awkward lift. I'm gonna bring you in and show you what it weighs. All right, there you see it. That's 150, 60, 70, 80, 90, 194. So that weighs 194 pounds. 
that's 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 a good size haul. That's a that's a pretty hefty motor, 194. I don't know what my 35 horse weighs, but I know my 35 horse I can pick up a lot easier than I can pick up this thing. This is a this is a hoss. So what's got me curious now? This is a 1983, right? How much does a 1973 weigh? I know you guys are sitting there at your at your TV or your computer or whatnot or your phone and going, well, what's the 73 weigh? Well, we're going to know what the 73 weighs. 73 weigh. 73 weigh? 73. I'm just going to quit saying that. All right. This thing's a beast because... When I'm picking it up, it makes the whole roof of my shop go boom, 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 boom. And it's, you know, it's pretty sturdy right here. It's gonna get my clampulation back in place for sure. We don't wanna be losing this guy. And some other stuff I learned about this thing I'm gonna share with you too because I honestly didn't know it existed. But here it is. All right. Let's just wheel this over here. Come here, Mr. 73. Now in 73, it would appear they do have clamps down here. The old transom clamps. And Whoa, where am I at? What am I doing? Here we go. Huh! Right in the face. Scales at zero. Now, the other reason I want to pick this one up too is you see how it's she's she's kicked out. She's like like that. It's because the trim is adjusted all the way up. And while it's on this stand, I want to go ahead and pull the pin out and slide her back in so it's in, uh, you know, surgical mode here. So, 196. What's this one weigh? Woo! Easy! All right, hanging on it. What the heck is that? Now I'm not gonna bring you in close for this. You're just gonna have to take my word for it, okay? Two oh two and a half. Nope, nope. Two oh three. Two oh three. So one ninety six to two oh three. And what this one has that that one doesn't have is it has a little, you know, the little. Hydrofoil. That don't weigh much. This one has a whole tiller handle assembly on here. You know, I'm grabbing onto it there. That this one doesn't have. So this one theoretically should weigh less. But right now, you know, 203 and 196, you got seven pounds difference. And if I put this apparatus over here onto this one, I'm guessing you'd add about two, three pounds. Huh. Isn't that interesting? So 203 versus 196. There you go. 10 years difference, about seven pounds difference. Uh, maybe the paint's thicker on here. I don't know. Could be some, I don't know. Anyway, there, my curiosity, curiosities has been satisfied. Now let's get it back down before it brings my ceiling down. Oh, get, oh, get on there. Oh yeah, almost forgot. We're gonna change the pitch. Yeah. There, more vertical. Vertical, vertical. One thing I can say about this one is there's, there's grease and it's not old grease, it's it's sticky good grease and I'm getting on my fingers here. Alrighty. Now, geez, she's down there. There we go. Thank you for your services, blue straps. Thank you for your service. Deer scale. I ain't kidding you. Let me tilt this down a little bit. This thing's just The camera doesn't do it justice. I mean, it's it's a hoss. I mean, this is going to be one heck of an outboard. 
I hope it's in, I don't know what kind of shape it's in. We'll learn about this one later. Let's get back to our featured attraction here. Let's just, let's just dive into this guy. I'm gonna get you in. Whoop, let's get a little closer here and we'll get you focused and we're gonna, we're gonna take a little look-see under the hood. Now, as we said with this one, it's a 1983 two-cylinder, 50 horsepower, uh, electric start. Here's your electrical cords here, but it's already got the tiller steer on it. And I'm gonna get into that a little bit here in a minute. Double clamps, front and rear. Here it is. Dum, da, da, da. So this one has a power pack. So this one would also have electronic ignition. And it's, you know, it's complete. What you look for, I'm gonna kinda go through some of the things you look for if you actually go look to buy an outboard and it's an older outboard. Look at the paint. Look at the paint through here. And you'll notice on this one that the paint's all factory, like that factory paint blue. All the way, everything's got that factory paint blue on it. That's one of the first things you want to look at. If you see the paint is heavily discolored or, you know, just changed tone somewhere throughout, that would give you some indication at some point time in the past it's been warm. It's gotten hot. And you can roll it over like this and kind of feel it pop and you feel that little bit of compression now i have no idea how much compression this has we're going to do that as well um i've already got uh carburetor kits coming for this just because of what the the person i bought it from what they described was it, it was doing lets me know i want to put you know clean the carbs out and make sure that's all good now i'm gonna spin you around to the other side real quick there hope nobody got dizzy so this is kind of neat. This tiller steer handle, I'm gonna see if I can, whoop. This I found fascinating because the other 50 horse I bought has, you know, for remote control, it has all the remote controls for it and everything like that. Well, I did not realize right up front here, I don't know if you can see it, there's a little bolt right there. Well, that normally where that bolt is would be a little knob that your steering thing would hook onto and move back and forth. And this one has the, and it has two bolt holes there that you can utilize. Well, this is a bolt on tiller. This isn't made as part of the whole underbody here an undercarriage. I thought that was very unique. Uh, maybe it's not unique. It's new to me. Okay. Let's just go with that. And it's all set up very cool to be, take a, you know, a remote steer type outboard and turn, turn it into a tiller. And then you got your shift knob right here, you know, forward, reverse, and neutral. And here's a start button. So this whole apparatus is wired up so there's a start button right here. And you can't access that start button unless it's in neutral and you push this, which engages the start button, you know, the starter. I thought that was pretty cool. Pretty slick little trick they got going on here. And I thought it was a, it's a neat thing. So then, so then I started thinking, do they have kits like this out there? And lo and behold, I found one kit on eBay. It was for a Johnson or an Evernrude 1990 or newer. Um, I think it said E-Tech or something. It had, it had special plugs where things plugged in uh, to convert it. But it was, uh, it was, very, it was very expensive. Five, $599 on eBay expensive. That's what I'm saying is expensive. And I thought, wow. But now that I know that this exists, your boy here is going to be, you know, on the internet, just looking at stuff, seeing what I can find because that other 50 horse can easily be converted. I could take this setup right here. I'm pretty positive, pretty darn close. And I could take this setup here and put it right on that other 50 horse if I needed to or wanted to or had a desire to. I don't, but I could. And as you can see here, it operates the throttle. The throttle feels a little... You know, this cabling here feels a little stiff. Feels like I got to crank on it pretty darn hard to get it to move. And yeah, so I think what we're going to do is we'll take some of this stuff up and we're going to lube it. Um, I know you can't see what I'm doing here. Silly me. But right here, I'm just, I'm doing the twist grip here. 
and kind of watching some of the stuff that ain't even in the shot. Boom. Watching some of this stuff move, and if I help it, it makes its full travel. But, you know, this this thing's got a long way to, to wide open throttle here. But it's also stopping it because it's not in gear. Now, if I go into gear, I, I'm guessing I can bring this thing all the way. Yeah, it's... Whoa, there seems to be a lot of... There's a lot of lost motion right here, too. You see that thing? It's, it's just kind of like... It's got a lot of wiggle to it. So, and maybe... Maybe it should be... Yeah, this should give it more throw. This would get... There's two different little knobber dues down here. So anyway, we got some work to do here is what I'm trying to say. And uh, let's just go ahead and let's just see what kind of... I'm going to hook a battery up to it. Lo and behold, hook a battery up to it here. And we're just going to see if this thing will... Uh, what kind of, now I'm not trying to start it. I'm just going to see what the compression is on it, and we'll go from there. Because uh, if, you, if you don't have compression, stop. Don't do anything else. You got compressor, compression, compression, then you can invest some more time and effort into it. No compression, you got to make some serious decisions about what you want to do with this power head. No compression means power head could have blown head gasket, could have seals that are gone. Could have a number of things. Could have a hole in the piston. Could have any number of things wrong. So, compression, first thing you check, always. So, first glance at the spark plugs, they look, you know, like they were burning kind of okay. A little wet around the threads, but this isn't really wet, but it's a little dark on that top cylinder. Uh, let's pull out the bottom one here. Same thing. Smells like, smells like good old two-stroke, but it's a little damp. But he said he was having to run it rich and hit it to keep it going, and that's probably what was causing some of the, I mean, the carburetor was not adjusted right. Something's not right. Let's just say it. Let's just leave it at that. Something's not right. All the wiring on this looks like to be in really solid condition. It's not messed up. It's not frayed. It's not decayed. All right. I got to go get a battery so I can whippy snippy this over. This does have a place that you could hook a rope. All right, we've got our battery hooked up, and we're going to hit the start button and see what happens or don't happen. Whoa. One forty. Holy smokes, that's beautiful. That's a that's strong. Helps if I don't hold that, huh? One forty. Wow. Impressive. We got ourselves something here, folks. We really, really do. Oh, the old bananas are going to be so happy and so fast. Now we're going to go ahead and stick the spark. <coughs> What's happening? We're going to go ahead and stick the spark plugs back in. Uh, just to keep the cylinders, you know, you know, in good shape. Now, if, I, if these spark plugs would have been dry as a popcorn fart, I wouldn't have just rolled it over like that without any lubrication in the cylinders. But seeing how wet these spark plugs were and what I saw, you know, I knew it was going to have enough lubrication in the cylinders from the old two-stroke it had been running through there. And this thing hasn't sat up very long, to my knowledge. It didn't, it didn't sound like it had sat up very long. I'm not going to seat these. You know what else we could do? Let's look for spark. We're here. We got the spark plugs out. We got the battery hooked up. Let's just see. If we got the old juice going on there. Might as well, we're right here. I was gonna move on, but nope. Now this does have a a power pack set up. So it's like I said, it's electronic. It has no points which is desirable. And some people swear by points. I get it. You know, mechanical. Mechanical. Death to computers. All right, I'm going to see if I can hit this and see if I can see anything. Oh, my. so bright 
it almost activated my my transitional lenses that is some serious spark man we i am so excited about this why does it have to be november ah uh, you know i'm gonna get this running and i could even drag the boat in here and put it on it but i ain't gonna be able to run it until next spring you know we're we're right ahead of thanksgiving here i don't i don't usually talk about the time of the year or whatnot but you know because it kind of time stamps the video but for this purpose it doesn't matter and this has a this has a nice lifting hook here i like that um those sparker laters and this is running a champion l77 jc4 but uh I think I'm going to go ahead and just, I'm going to leave them loose, you know, finger tight for now. Because I, I like to, when I put the new carb on and stuff, I'm going to put brand new spark plugs in it anyway. But that's going to keep that sealed up. So what do we got? Let's recap. Compression. We got spark. We got paint. That looks all uniform and clean. Now this has your normal two-stroke, you know. This is, this is actually pretty clean down in here. Well, I'm gonna tip you down in here and you take a look. Now, what I, what I brought you to take a look at in here is this isn't that dirty. This is actually, you know, just your normal, you know, little spritzing up here and there. She looked like brand new under here. I am just thrilled to death with the condition of this old outboard. My goodness, this is awesome. Now I've got this tilted up. I want to pull this prop off. This prop is, you know, it's been hammered. It's uh, I don't know what it is for pitch. Looks like a pretty high pitch prop, but it also looks, you know, like it should have been bigger in diameter because looking at the old 73, the prop looks a little bigger. We'll investigate that. So we'll get the old needle nose pliers here and get this cotter pin out. Cotter pin. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring you in close. I want to show you something I also look for. Now what I want you to watch is this center. This is a, a center drilled hole that was put in it when the shaft was being manufactured and it should be dead center of everything. And what you want to do is you rotate this around and it's kind of hard to see, but what you want to see is that circle running dead center. You want, you don't want to see it. You don't want to see it doing this moving around, but this one here, is very straight, running very true from what I can see here. What that tells you is that your output shaft isn't bent, which is nice to see. So we're gonna go ahead and snag this old cotter pin out of here. There we go. Back this nut off. And then we should be able to, it's moving. Get a little spacer here. Let's see if I can get that. There it goes. It's coming right off. Splines could definitely use some grease. There's definitely not enough grease there. You want to pull this spacer out and look under here because you're looking for any kind of fishing line or anything that could have got wrapped up around behind here. And what that'll do is that'll just tear your seal out. That looks all pretty good. I got her up in my teeth here because I want to, let's just see what, let's just see what, can we see what kind of, what we got here maybe? Yeah, so we got an 11 and 3 quarter by 17. Is what was on here so that'll give me an idea of what i need and then we can count the spline on here as well and see what what kind of hub i gotta have 11 and 3 8 by 17. now we're going to get after the drain hole here and see if we can get that looking better now what I'm gunning for is hopefully we don't see any water. I 
get me a pan. Now normally I would be doing this while it's tilted down, but and I will tilt it down after I get the plug out just to get all the oil out. That's some good looking oil there. Now it's not my M's oil that I use, but it is. It looks like it's been well taken care of. That's always good to see. I'm going to go ahead and crack this one loose while it's up here in my teeth. And then I'll drop this whole thing back down. Now that we got it back down, let's go ahead and pull that bottom plug back out. And the upper plug, I'll go ahead and back all the way out too. That lets it drain a little easier. There she goes. That's some good clean gear oil there. I'm not unhappy with that at all. Now what some of you might have noticed already is this skeg is broke off right here. It should come on down and up. Um, when I, I'm going to pull this gearbox off. I'm not going to refill it with oil yet, but I'm going to pull the gearbox the rest of the way off. We're going to look at that water pump, make sure the water pump's you know, we're not going to make sure it's in good shape. <coughs> we're actually going to put a fresh water pump in. So, so far, folks, we're, we're doing really well with this uh, purchase. We've got spark. We've got compression. We've got no evidence of any kind of overheating that's happened. All the wiring looks very original and very clean and very flexible and not cracking. There's no corrosion on any of the terminals. we got the gearbox oil. It looks fantastic. Uh, the guy I bought it from did say that he had had a, uh, uh, something happen with the old gearbox, and this is a replacement one that he's put, that's been put on here. Obviously, it's been painted camo. Now, let's talk about the camo paint. Now, the banana is not trying to hide from anybody. It's bright yellow, right? And the camo paint, well, that's just not going to live for, for me to put it on that boat. So, I want you guys... Make some suggestions. Oops, I hit my mic. Sorry about that. I want you guys to give me some suggestions. This still got the original foam insulation in here. Give me some suggestions of what you think I should paint this. Uh, it's got some fiberglass damage here and there that I'll be able to fix. A little crack here or there, um, which is going to be actually pretty easy to fix, I, I feel. A uh, little, little fiberglass putty here. We'll sand her off smooth. Let's make this thing you know, look good. And what, yeah, we got, we do a little sand and we'll bring her back. But what color do you think I should paint it? So keep in mind the banana is canary yellow. Now, and we could go back to the original, you know, white or this, maybe the original was, original looking at this was more of that uh, silvery blue, more silver with a little blue in it type thing in it. But I thought, well, as long as I'm repainting it, why not make it look like what I want it to look like? Do I bring it back to something that looks very original? Maybe white, a nice contrast to the yellow. Um, maybe the silver-black combo with some nice decals on it. Uh, you guys suggest, in the comments below, I'm going to, if you're in the continental United States, I'm going to be clear about this, Leave a comment below of what color you think I should paint it. And if I pick the color that you pick, and if there's 10 people that pick, if there's 10 people that pick the same color, I will do a random drawing of those 10 people. I want to send you one of my hats that says, if it ain't broke, fix it till it is, camo hat with the American flag underneath the bill. For completely free to you. So... Don't be afraid to share this with other people. Don't be afraid to comment. Let me know what color. Because if I pick the color you pick, and like I said, multiple people pick the same color, I'll do a random, uh, a random uh, drawing of that color, and then I'll send one person on my channel a free hat. Um, but yeah, it's definitely got to have paint. I can't put it on the, the banana like this. Now, <coughs> if it was more of a survivor color, um, just needed some cleaning up. I don't, I would leave it original, but you know, this has already been completely and totally messed with. Uh, I think it's a good time. This is an excellent time to just change the color back to what it maybe originally was, uh, or 
something completely different. Do I put a whole black motor on the back of the, you know, paint it black? This is, I don't think I've mentioned it yet. You probably saw it in the title. This is an Evinrude. Evinrude. The other one we had over here obviously was a Johnson. So this is a 1983 Evinrude. And the Johnson and Evinrude, they look very, very similar. Uh, but yeah, that's, uh, I'm going to call it a wrap on this video for now. Oh, one more thing we're going to do. So this is part one. There's going to be multiple parts to this guy because I want to, I want to keep the videos as, uh, I don't want to make them as short as possible. Don't get me wrong there, but I want to, I want to cover enough stuff in detail so that it would help somebody else. If somebody else had a 50 horse, they wanted to go through, do some checks on, they could do exactly what I'm doing and, uh, have same hopefully positive results. So the next thing we're gonna do is either the carburetor, if my carburetor, I ordered four carburetor kits and I'll tell you why in the, in, I'll tell you why. I bought two, let's just call them El Cheapos, off of amazon.com. And then I bought two not cheapos. <laughs> and I'll give you the prices when we start messing with the carburetor. I bought them from MarineEngine.com. I bought quite a few things from MarineEngine.com, and these would be uh, Evinrude or Johnson, or if you're buying Mercury stuff, it'd be Mercury sort of OEM type stuff, uh, as opposed to some of this aftermarket stuff. So I wanted to look at the two kits. I wanted to compare them, share that with information with you folks out there, and let you make your own decision as to what you'd like to do when you rebuild your carburetor. So we'll do another video on just the carburetor rebuild because that's gonna have a lot involved in that. And then we'll have a, a water pump video on pulling this gearbox off, showing you how to do that and putting a new water pump on it. And as a bonus feature, this has got a broken skag on it. I'm gonna see if there's a good way, I'm pretty sure I can, I'm confident in myself, that I can weld a new skeg back on here, piece, because people have said that. I, I did a video, oh, probably over last summer, I think, where I put a, a broke a skeg off of an off a gearbox and I showed you how to weld it back on without with minimal tools, with stuff that you go to a big box store and, and put it back together with. Uh, I might do the exact same thing here, but people have always said in that video, hey, you know, I broke it off. It's in the bottom of the lake or the bottom of the river. I can't find the broken piece. That's fine. I'm gonna show you what I do to, without the, having the piece, I don't have it. I bought the whole motor without it, right? Or whole outboard without it. I'm gonna fabricate a piece, weld it on, and uh, we'll, see, we'll see what kind of results we get. I pretty, I'm pretty confident I can, I can make it look like it was never, never gone. Um, that's kind of the, it's kind of a thing I can do. Let's just put that in, and you can do it too. I'm gonna show you step by step how I do that. So you can ha possibly have the same outcome, same results that I'm having. I'm going to, I will have, I will have. All right. Uh, I appreciate everybody watching. The drawing on the hats will be sometime the next two, three videos. Listen, watch completely for the results. Because if I call your name out, I'm not going to send you an email. I'm not going to send you a message. I'm not going to reply to your comment. You got to watch. You got to listen. And you got to send me an email when I tell you. Who you are, that one. And that seems fair, right? Definitely does. I'm excited to give away a hat, and I'm excited for you to see me bring this thing back to, you know, it's it's actually good, but to bring the paint back around. Uh, I'm not a body person or a paint person by trade, you know, but I can, I can fake it. I can fake it for sure. But uh, I appreciate you folks watching. Stay tuned for the up more upcoming videos. Uh, on this one and other outboards and other inboards that I have in the shop throughout this winter. I have this just a small representation here of the outboards we're going to be working on this winter. I've got a 35 horse, a 25 horse, an 18 horse fast twin, another 25 horse, another 35 horse short shaft. I've got some sport twins. I got some Mercury's and I got a shed shed of full of other outboards that are, that are up for rehabilitation and they're going to pass through here and we're going to get them hopefully back on the water next summer, whether either by me or other people. But, uh, we're going to, we're going to see a lot of stuff this winter. I have a feeling this winter it's going to be a long, long, boring winter. It's already turned cold. It's already snowed and we're not even nowhere near December. And if you know anything about Iowa and on North of Iowa, it just, 
It doesn't get better from here. That's all there is to it. It does not get better from here. So, but we got, we got plenty of content for you. Thanks for watching. This is Michael saying, if it ain't broke, fix it till it is. Like and subscribe, share it with your buddies. And let's, uh, let's keep this channel going. Let's keep me, uh, let's keep me doing this for you. Uh, I enjoy doing it and I hope you guys enjoy watching and then that's enough. That's enough. We're out of here. There's another 25 horse. Right here. 1972 to 19, 1979 to 1982. Mercruiser up high in the stand here. We're going to go over that in great detail as well. I'm, I'm excited to share this one with you. Uh, uh, never heard it run. Just took it out of a boat a couple years ago and brought it in here. Stuck it on a stand and go, huh, well, I need to get that one running. I did already drain the oil and put me a new Wix filter on it. Was that a waste of money? Could have been. We'll see. All I know is I didn't want to not put the filter and the oil back in it and cause me a problem. Because, you know, if you step away from something too long, you just don't. Yep, needs a quart still. Uh. I put four in it, it takes five, I believe. But always put the oil back in. Don't risk the bit don't risk it for the biscuit. What's going on? Why? Why? Oh, coil slid down. Get in there. Alright. Yep. Still a quart low. Alright. And it'll be even lower once that pumps oil up into the oil filter. Alright. Thanks guys. Catch you on the next one. Coming soon. Appreciate you, appreciate you watching very much.